you're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. Hi, it's been a while since I've made a, a video about the VT132, but um, given that I'm just about to launch the new standalone version, I wanted to give you an update on the firmware. Um, I've, I am running this on the new VT132 standalone, which you'll see shortly. Uh, I've got it connected up to my IMSE, um, so that we've got some text to have a look at on the terminal. So I'm just going to reboot the IMSE, uh, get some text on the screen, and get things running. Okay, um, so the first thing I'll do is jump into the setup screens on the VT132, and we'll head through to setup C, where we can see that we are now running on a VT132 standalone, and this has got the pre-release or beta um, software that packs three new features. So the first one of those is support for USB keyboards. The original VT132 only had support for uh, PS2 connected keyboards. And um, as of the standalone version, there's now an, 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 alter, an optional adapter that lets you collect, uh, connect native USB HID keyboards, which includes uh, all the wireless keyboard adapters, but not Bluetooth. Um, it, there's also a limitation that you can't connect uh, behind a hub. And so that also excludes some USB keyboards that have integrated hubs, such as the Raspberry Pi keyboards. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to draw your attention to while we're on this screen is that huge amount of free 32-bit memory. You can see there's something in excess of about four megabytes. Um, that's because I'm using the ESP32 uh, W Rover chip, which has the onboard uh, PS RAM, um, but not re really not using very much of that memory. And that got me thinking about um, what features could I include that might use up some of that memory. And then that led me to uh, including a, a scroll back history. So I'll demonstrate that for you shortly. And then the other feature was actually recommended by one of the early adopters of the VT132. Of course, none of us thought about it while we were doing a, a, the original beta testing, but it, it seemed quite obvious when it was suggested. Why shouldn't, why, why not include a screensaver? So if I jump out of the setup screens and head over to the quick menu, uh, we'll have a look at the options around these two new features. So there's a new display menu added here to the quick menu. And here you can see we can uh, set an option to set a history buffer size. Now the default is 5,000 lines and that doesn't even use up all the available memory there. Um, you can tone that down to 1,000, 100 or disable it if you're concerned that the history is having some kind of negative impact on your experience. But um, so far so good, I haven't noticed anything, uh, haven't noticed any, it interfering in any way. Uh, you can clear the history from this menu, uh, but you can also clear the history when you're viewing it. But the other feature is the what, what on deck terminals uh, by the VT500 series was called the CRT saver, but all of us would know it as a screen saver. So on that, you can it defaults to disabled. Um, you can set it to a range of times. I've just included 10 seconds there so we can get a, a quick switch to the screen saver. While we're on the quick menu, I have also added in uh, the ability to save and restore settings to the NVRAM, and that includes all the settings, both from here in the quick menu and from the setup screens. So it's exactly the same as doing a Shift S to save or a Shift R to restore. And you can see I've been talking for more than 10 seconds, and so the screen saver or CRT saver has kicked in. And it just um, paints the banner, the same as you see on setup screen C, in this case, VT132 standalone, uh, and it just paints that around the screen in a different color, uh, moving it about every five seconds. And as soon as you hit any key on the keyboard, including just a shift key, with so it's not going to cause create a keystroke, it just uh, disables the screensaver or uh, turns off the screensaver. And so the screensaver will kick in from the quick menu. It'll also kick in from uh, the active screen or from the startup menu, so it doesn't get blocked by being in a, in a setup screen. Um, there it goes again. And it will 
um, switch back to the default screen when you press anything on the keyboard or if it receives any incoming text over the serial connection. So uh, it'll immediately display again. So um, Now let's look at the scroll history. Now you noticed when I first booted up the IMSAI to give us some text to look at, a lot of that was scrolling off the screen, but by now we would have otherwise lost all that information. But if I invoke the scroll history, um, we can in fact see that there were 48 lines of text that scrolled off the top of the screen that have been buffered and uh, we must be at the bottom of it there and up oh, the screensaver keeps kicking in and we can scroll up page at a time using the page up keys or we can scroll down page at a time page down and as soon as we scroll off the bottom we go back to the active screen now you'll notice not all of the banner was there that's because only lines that scroll off the top of the screen end up in the history buffer, not the content of the active screen. Back in the, the scroll history, we can also uh, scroll line by line using just the up and down arrow keys. You can either scroll off the bottom back onto the active screen, or if you're somewhere in the scroll history, you can hit the escape key to get back to the active screen. And just like you could clear the history from the quick menu, similarly, if you're in the scroll history and you do a shift C, capital C, it clears the, the screen history, the scroll history. So uh, if I try to open it now, I can't get in because there's nothing in there. And if we do something um, to put some content in the scroll history, shows a fairly long one here. and then start scrolling back through that in the history. If we get all the way back to the top of the history, you'll see that that's where it starts. So the previous content had been cleared. The scroll history um, buffer will also be cleared if you change the number of lines uh, that you wanna have buffered, or if you change any of the screen modes, such as alternating between 80 and 132 column, or changing the number of lines that are displayed on the screen from 24 to 25 or 30. Um, or if you change uh, between fonts, between the um, code page 437 or the deck font, uh, that clean, clears the screen history buffer. So if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that preview of the new features of the VT132. And if you're after more information on the VT132, head, of, head over to the website at thehighnibble.com.